Hey everybody, I'm Robert from the band Rooney, and I'm in Fort Lauderdale, and this is Soundbite Magazine. Hi, I'm Veronica from Soundbite Magazine. Today I'm with Robert Schwartzman of Rooney. How have you been enjoying Florida? It's great. It's, it's, uh, we just got here today. We were in Orlando last night. And um, I, love, I really love coming to Florida. Like, I love the climate. I really like the humid, hot, tropical thing. And uh, I've played Culture Room before, so I love this little strip mall that we're in. And uh, it's fun to like be in a place where there's a lot of stuff to see. So, I don't know, I'm, it's good to be back. I think it's been so long since like, I've played a Rooney show here. So it feels good to, you know, to come back to a lot of cities that I've played a lot of shows in. And what inspired your grand Groundswell tour? Um, well, first of all, I, li I like to name things. Like, it's kind of fun to give things a name. And um, when you go on the road, it's an opportunity to create like, a certain vibe or personality for a tour. Because like an album has a name and a personality, so why shouldn't a tour? You know what I mean? But um, the bands that are here, Royal Teeth, Swimming with Bears is the band that's playing first. And, um, and then we pick up in December and we do a run with um, a band called Romes and then a band uh, called Swim. Uh, there's all different like sides to this tour, but I think my feeling is I just want to make a good night of music, like a fun, a fun night of music, because people, you know, they're paying to come see the show, and I think every band should be exciting and offer something great to the audience, you know what I mean? not just a headline. headline. I agree. And what inspired your new album, Washed Away? I really missed making Rooney records. Uh, it's been such a big part of my life for so long. It's not easy to walk away from something that you've been involved in for like, you know, half of your life. So I could trick myself and pretend that I could move on from it, but I can't. You know what I mean? Like I, I like to play all, all the music. So it's like if I started a new band, I wouldn't play Shaken and Blue Side and stuff like that. And that'd be so sad to not play this song. Those are like my, you know, my babies and they're part of my life. And I have so many memories of playing these songs with, with a great audience. And so, anyway, so I think Rooney to me represents a history of music and a certain vibe and personality in music. So I like having that. I like having that alive and well. But yeah, so when you make a record, you sort of you, you restart. So like every album. Like, look at, you know, Bon Jovi or Aerosmith or something. Or look at the Rolling Stones. They're putting a new record out, right? So, like, you'll notice that every time a band puts a record out, they'll go tour. And then when their record's kind of, like, cooling off, they'll, like, not tour anymore. They'll go make a new record. So there's, like, this thing, this, like, cycle that happens. So people make records to sort of stimulate the, the next phase of their career, you know? And, uh, but to me, I don't believe in like a record cycle. So I'm trying to get away from record cycles and just like see it all as one continuous flowing, you know, thing. And create at your own pace. Yeah, but I just want to stay busy though with it. Cause I, I don't, you know, I never, like Rooney stopped and start, started a lot. Like, you know, if, if someone's a fan of Rooney, they're going to know there was like four years between the first and second record. And a lot of interviews I did, people would say like, like, wh wh where were you? Like, what happened? Like, four years? So, you know, five years just went by between Eureka and like, this record. Or five, technically six, but five because I was touring for a year and a half. And what is your favorite song of, of Washed Away? Well, I really like the piano songs. I Miss You When You're Gone and Sad But True. I really like All The Beautiful People. Just only because I, you know, I, I know that Rooney has a certain vibe, but like it's fun to introduce some new stuff that might be a little slightly off, you know, a little different than what we're used to hearing. And I think All the Beautiful People, I, I didn't write it for the Rooney record. I, I had actually written it um, as just with a friend of mine we got together and wrote, and I had no idea it was going to be on the record, but I thought it was just like, why not put this on the record? It has a, an energy to it that I think works well for this record. And it, it, I love the synth, you know, the incorporating synths and drum machines. And so I really like that record. Don't Be Hero, I really like. My Heart Beats For You, I was, I was happy that was a single. Um, Why, 
the fact that it's like a duet is really kind of cool. It's so different for Rooney. And, Cause you know, this is sort of a reboot, you know, it's like a, we're, after like six years, you're, you're kind of to tell, tell a new story to people, you know? And I think my new story is that, you know, I think that I'm taking all the experiences I've learned so far over the years, the things I, I've learned to, to love about this job and music and the things I've learned that I don't like and trying to kind of customize my life, you know, to fit those likes and dislikes about you know this industry or this profession and then I think being more open to collaborating is sort of like a new thing for me like being more open-minded when it comes to letting other people have share that moment together mm -hmm. what inspired you to create your uplifting and memorable music I kind of like move around my studio a lot like I, I kind of get into it physically meaning I dance to it <laughs> but I just kind of like I kind of go with it musically physically in my studio so when you're moving around, you're kind of making something maybe uplifting that gets you going. So maybe I just gravitate towards that, but I like energy in music. Um, that's not to say I don't like slow songs, but like when I play live, I really like to play more upbeat stuff. And uh, I like, you know, I like fun. I just think music can be a lot of things. Music doesn't have to always be one thing, you know, and I think that I really love the fun, excite. I like making people, you know, happy and playing music that is really uplifting in terms of its feeling musically and positive. You know, maybe lyrically they they sound a little more negative because they're like sad lyrics about breakups and stuff like that. But musically they take you maybe up. You know what I mean? And what lyric best resonates with you from your current album? Maybe "Sad but True" is like one of my favorite more. It's, I like, the, musically I like Sad But True. It's actually from the movie, I just directed a movie called Dreamland, so Sad But True I wrote for Dreamland. Um, and uh, I like the chorus uh, of, of this song, but I just, the, the last phrase is, you know, suddenly out of the blue it all makes sense. It's, it's sad, it's so sad but true. But it's the, it's, it all makes sense, it's so sad but true. I think it's like when you realize something because this character in this movie is uh, sort of lost and kind of finding his way. And there's something, he's, you know, he's a dreamer. He's like trying to figure out what his dream is in life. And sometimes you, you find something else that's not what you expected, but, you, but it's right. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's like something just makes sense the way it is. You know? And what inspired Dreamland? Well, Dreamland, I just really wanted to make a movie because I, I love films. I grew up very much you know, loving movies around being with filmmakers, going to sets, you know, like eating craft service and watching people act and like, you know, all that cool stuff as a, you just, you know, it's when you're around it, you just kind of like fall into it. And um, so I fantasized about making my own movie when I was a kid and then I went to film school and uh, that's when I got home from, from film school is when I wrote Blue Side and it was like the first song I'd ever written. So like, I think, I got sucked into the music industry, but I kind of really was intending to, to direct movies. That was like my goal. And uh, when I took a break from Rooney, I got to like try to make that happen. So, uh, but I, I thought of this sort of, I pitched my friend this idea for a movie, which was, you know, what if it's a guy who, he's in like a sort of a bad relationship and you can tell he's just so frustrated with his, like where his life is so far as like a young adult and she's not the most pleasant like girl to be around and she's got her own issues and there's a sexual disconnect there's like a physical issue happening between them and he's a you know he's a piano teacher and he's kind of like an old soul and he gets a job at this like upscale hotel where he meets and is sort of seduced by this very you know attractive you know married woman who you know has things that he doesn't have and and has, they have this sort of whirlwind, like quick little love affair together. And, and from that he takes, you know, he takes something that he can apply to his own life in its, in its distorted kind of way. But it's sort of the, a comedy mixed with some real dramatic moments. But more, you know, but I like comedies, but not too broad, you know, like a heartfelt comedy. So it's sort of in that romantic comedy world, but. So I pitched him this idea and he thought it was something we could write together. And I also thought it was something we could actually shoot in LA 
because you know if you're, if you're gonna make a movie it's all the filmmakers watching like you might have access to things that might help your story and if a story is too expensive you might have trouble trying to make that story right now mm -hmm. based on the resources you have so you know we all the beauty is you you know we all have cameras now and we can all do something so you try to use what you can when you have it. And I think with Dreamland, we had some locations and we had some actors we could maybe like try to go get. And we had some, you know, we had a, maybe access to a good camera. So like we use those types of things to help us create this opportunity. But it seemed like a shootable movie. And do you associate yourself with any of the characters in the film? Yeah, like I think the, the lead guy's name is Monty. And I feel like there's, a, there's definitely a Monty in me. Johnny Simmons plays him, he's great in the movie. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know, I think that maybe everyone is a part of you in some way. I think that, just like a song, you know, like when you write a lyric, even if you're writing about the other character, they're, they're a part of, that other character is a part of you in some way. What is the main difference that you have found in writing a movie soundtrack compared to a Making album? A well, I think the biggest difference is that um, you know, when, when I make an album, it's sort of a, more of a personal thing. Like, I, I want the songs to be personal, I want them to be special, I want them to speak to people, and I'm the one who has to say, like, no, nah, this part's not good enough, or I gotta keep writing more songs, like, I don't think I have enough songs that are good for this record. When I'm working on someone else's, like, film, they're, they're gonna tell me what they really want the music to be. So you're, you're following their vision, you know? You're along for their ride, and you just want to support their, their product to make it as great as it can be. But an album's like such a, per it's more, it's my product. From your music, what would be the best theme song for Ferris Bueller's Day Off? I feel like the song Why could be in the movie somewhere. I don't know why. Which is the lyric of the song, but uh, I don't know. Why is like when he sings Donka Shane on, you know, when he, they do like Shake It? I could see like Why or something being sung in that scene, but I don't know. What's like the most 80s Rooney song? Like maybe Simply Because or um, something with like synthesizers. All or Nothing. All or Nothing. I like yeah, Time Alone. Time, you like Time Alone? I like good. Time Alone. Thank you. I'm glad. It's good to hear when people reference the new record, you know? Cool. Don't be a hero could also fit. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You should just I, take all the music out of the movie and, and put it as a play. <laughs> yeah. We could do that. We could do that. Yeah. Let's call him up now. I'm gonna call John Hughes. <laughs>